So, today we will talk about uh, psychometric assessment, it is very important in uh, behavioral science to assess a human being and we assess human being through several procedures and one such procedure is called testing. Now, test and experiment are two major methodologies which are found in behavioral science. By experiment generally we try to understand what are the commonalities amongst the individuals that are in hand. By test we try to do just the opposite thing, we try to understand what are the differences between the two individuals. So, when we refer about assessment, we primarily refer about assessment in terms of seeing the difference between two individuals or more than two individuals. But assessment before we talk about it, what is the relevance in our day to day life, it is also important to understand that what is the difference between assessment and diagnosis. Assessment is a more generic term in which we try to understand the complete profile of a human being based on certain parameters. In diagnosis we try to understand using some form of deficiency model, the difficulties, the kind of disorders, the kind of abnormalities or aberration a person does have and we try to pinpoint that assessment which we generally refer as diagnosis. My talk today would primarily rest on assessment and the relevance of assessment into our day to day life, primarily the psychometric assessment. Now, when we talk about assessment as I said, generally we refer about test as a procedure. Before we talk about test as a procedure, I am also supposed to talk to you about how experimental procedures are also done. When experiments are conducted, we follow certain procedures. In test also we start follow certain procedures. It is important to understand the difference between or the relevance of experiment or test in behavioral science. When we conduct an experiment, we conduct an experiment through certain steps. One such step is that we first decide how to develop a strategy to conduct an experiment. The strategy may be a observational strategy or a experimental strategy or a testing strategy. Next what we try to do is to understand the art and science of a given construct based on which the test or experiment would be conducted. This is called heuristics. After doing the heuristics which is basically a survey of literature, we try to understand the logistics that how we conduct the experiment or how we do the testing. The logistics are primarily the instruments based on which the studies are conducted. In case of test, it may be a standard tool. In case of experiment, it can be an experimental hardware based on which we try to understand certain generic component or qualities of a human being. And after we determine the logistics, we go to the tactics, which is basically a research methodology. So, either in experiment or test, we develop a research methodology that how we conduct an experiment or a test. When we decide about the tactics or the research methodology, we also decide that how the data are to be collected, treated and then interpreted following analysis, which we call statistic. So, statistic basically is a procedure based on which we try to understand from the absolute values to the relative importance of those values in understanding or quantifying or calibrating a human parameter or a human quality. Therefore, statistics is a very important parameter or a step in any kind of research methodology. Finally, we try to communicate that research even doing any procedure, it may be a completely experimental procedure, it may be a cross experimental procedure or it can be completely based on a testing paradigm or a procedure based on certain correlation analysis. So, to repeat 
whenever we conduct an experiment, we conduct experiment through certain steps. The steps are therefore, how we strategize an experiment or test, how the heuristics are conducted, how the logistics are decided, how the tactics are determined, how the statistics are analyzed and then finally, how we conduct it. In all such cases, the testing as a paradigm based on which human assessments are done has got a certain relevance. In my talk today, I would like to tell you how assessment is important first and then based on assessment, how a system is conducted to profile a human being based on all parameters that are in hand for us. So, basically I will try to tell you the relevance of assessment in our day to day life, how we can make use of it and then finally, how they can be utilized to get a deliverable out of our researches. So, some of the basic questions that come to us in our mind that will the person be able to perform a job and to what level of excellence. Normally, we find all human beings have got almost uh, average or similar characteristics, but all human beings cannot do everything that is given to them. It is very important in psychometric assessment for us to understand that whether the person would be able to perform a job and if he is given that job to what extent he will perform. Then the question comes, will a person stay long enough in the job to justify the cost in training? Basically, we try to get a raw material through some kind of assessment in order to understand the person's capability to do a job. But then the question comes that even if the person is capable and crosses a threshold in a assessment procedure, the problem is that all are not susceptible or all are not equally trainable. So, trainability is also a component which is also assessed. So, assessment is very important not only the selection point of view, assessment is also important from the training point of view. Then the question comes whether the organization will offer what the person is looking for. Suppose, somebody goes for a job in an industry and I have to select him. Now, the person may be having an expectation, the industry would like or the organization would like to understand to what extent he will perform and whether the pay to be given to him is uh, in synchrony with what he is looking for or not. And then finally, whether a resume tell all about a person or not. That is, if a person tells that these are my qualities, can I ensure those qualities through some form of psychometric testing or not? This is what is a very important question. Then more question comes, most of the assessments in our day to day affair do not follow a psychometric testing procedure. Generally, they depend on some kind of interview. The question comes whether the outcome of interview depend on the credibility of the candidate or not. The question is that uh, at times the heterogeneity in the assessment brings some kind of moderation in the overall credibility of the candidate. So, it often happens that the candidate's acceptance to a given organization is based primarily on the heterogeneity of the assessment procedure and not attributed to the credibility of the candidate's capability. Therefore, the question further comes up, how do we find talent for our organization? Is it really possible to get right kind of talent for our institutions, organizations? Should we use psychometric test at entry level only? Because in our country almost all entry examinations are based on some form of examination. Can I call them as psychometric assessment? Most of the achievement tests that we use in AIEEE, JE, AIPMT, PMT, can we call them as psychometric assessment? What is the relevance and how they are different from the psychometric relevance, psychometric properties of other tests that are used in this country or in, or in vogue in our uh, country? 
do their tests available customized to our need? That is also a very important question. There are several tests which are available in the country or abroad. Point is whether these tests are equally suitable to all our conditions. If they are not suitable, why they are not suitable? Can we make use of those tests for other purposes as well? Have we ever done a cost benefit analysis using psychometric tools? Now, the question comes here that psychometric tool is a very different uh, kind of tool, it is a very different proposition, it is not very easy to develop. One of the most important factor in psychometric tool development comes out of the definition of the construct, the selection of the items, then item selection procedure or analysis, the response analytic procedures, the reliability of the test, the validity of the test, determining the normative standards for the test, ability to predict or the predictive validity of the test and finally, seeing whether the test is producing longitudinally the right kind of results for which they are being used. These are the questions in psychometric testing. So, one of the most important question in psychometric testing is that how we develop it, how we make use of it and to what extent the predictive validity of the psychometric test can be utilized. So, therefore, we have certain challenges in hand that what kind of test we should be choosing for a job if the person is candid appearing for a particular course, what kind of test should be utilized if the person is using for a engineering college, what kind of test should be used if a person is going for some kind of job, what kind of test should be used. What are the reliabilities and validity of a test in a population because every test has some form of reliability and some form of validity. Now, the representativeness of the test in the population is a very important marker. All test cannot be reliable in all kinds of populations. By reliability we mean to say that whether the test is capable of producing consistent results or not and in validity of the test we mean to say whether the test is producing result for which it has actually been constructed or fabricated. But the most important part after reliability and validity is the norm or the normative standards of the test. That is each population has a different form of distribution. Now, we all know that uh, any characteristic of a human population are normally distributed. Statistically, they are distributed in a different in a particular shape which is called Gaussian shape or a Norbert distribution or a bell shaped curve. But each population is unique, each population has its own characteristic feature. Therefore, it is very important that after we develop a test, we try to see that whether the test is population representative or not. Any test that has been developed uh, in a different country may not be very uh, amicably or effectively utilized in all the countries in the world. Therefore, it is important to see the culture specificity. What Harry Triandis once said that 70 percent of the tests and models are developed only based on 30 percent of the population in the world. That is most of the tests and theories and constructs are developed in the western population which is just 30 percent of the world population whether, uh, whereas 70 percent of the population who are staying in the other side of the world their population characteristics remain unknown to us. Then the question comes whether the development of test are aligned to an organization's return on investment or not. The question also comes the knowledge about the subject amongst the HR professional who, who knows this subject. In industry there is a big demand of psychometric testing. Most of the people who go to the industry or organizations they are very much keen on having some kind of psychometric testing, but the point is that psychometric testing is a very important form of science where each and every component of uh, psychometric testing needs to be analyzed scientifically with construct development, with proper item development and then con following the construction of the item, proper testing procedure, testing their reliability, validity, norm formation, everything is so important. So, it is more a science 
the utilizations are generally done by HR professional. Normally, they do not have all the depth that is required for psychometric assessment. Therefore, it is important that the R and D efforts for HR professional should be separated from the making usage of those tests by other people. So, the question comes that the statistics uh, showing the value for money that has been invested for a given training or a for a particular uh, selection needs to be understood from the perspective of utilizing psychometric testing. We have more concerns, more challenges for example, preference of senior applicants to sit for a test. Normally, the people in organizations they do not want to sit for a test, there is a stigma which suggests that somebody who is already very senior in the organization, they do not want to appear for it. It is only meant for youngsters, it is only meant for entry level, but psychometric test actually can be utilized at all level of our career, every level of our career. So, it is important that in some organizations to understand that if such kind of stigmas are inherent within this system, it is possible to have online tests to promote self screening, so that they understand what, where they actually stand, where they actually are in order to uh, correctly predict about their own capabilities for tomorrow's environment. Well, psychometric tests are uh, generally done for two purposes, one purpose is cognitive in nature, other is non-cognitive or the personality. When we refer about cognitive, we actually refer about a large variety of psychological variables, which include sensation that is acceptance of an energy of any sense organ to any sense organ, perception how we interpret the energy, attention how we attend to some such energies, memory, learning, intelligence, decision making, concept formation, problem solving. There are varieties of concepts which are inherent in the component called cognition. Cognition is nothing but how we accept an energy, how we process an energy and how we retrieve that when it is actually required. Within that cognitive domain, IQ or the intelligence is one thing that traditionally psychometricians have been measuring since 1904 or 1905 with the advent of the first Binet test. Now, there are certain misconceptions related to IQ. I would like to first tell what are the misconceptions which are within the concept of intelligence quotient. It is generally believed for an outcome measure that people with high IQ are better performers. Now, IQ is a construct. IQ tells about somebody's capability. It does not uh, directly corroborate always with the performance of a candidate. So, it is a misconception that people with high IQ are better performers. They may be or they may, may not be. We also have conception misconceptions that those who are high achievers, they are just well in all domains. We need to understand that IQ is something which is separate from other domains of human behavior. We should not try to equate that high achievers or people with high IQ will have good in every spheres. They may be able to adjust with their environment, they may not be able to adjust with other environment. We also have the misconception that people with IQ have better personality. There is not much of correlation in this sphere, neither high IQ people will have better personality, nor it is true that people with slightly low IQ will not have a better personality. We also have a tendency to believe that intelligent people take better decisions, that those who are intelligent, those who process things well, they also take decisions well. With intelligent people, we generally attribute or attach decision making in terms of uh, taking a very good decision. But intelligent people may always try to take a very good decisions, which are not wise in all occasions. Even less intelligent people may take, may not take good decisions, but they may take right decisions. Decision making has its own variants, like best decision, good decision, right decision. 
they cannot all be attributed or correlated with intelligence. And finally, we also believe that talented people can be identified easily. Those who have got talent, anybody can identify. That may not also be true. So, there are certain misconceptions based on which IQ testing are done and there are varieties of IQ tests available in the, in the world, varieties and these tests very accurately measures the IQ of a given person. But the tendency to correlate IQ with other domains of human personality or human behavior are not necessarily true. We also have certain misconceptions whenever we go for some kind of talent search. We believe that talent is always expressed somehow. If somebody has got talent or high IQ, that would be expressed somehow. So, identifying talent is not a very difficult job. But some people believe that only talented people can identify talent. Therefore, identifying talent is a difficulty. Other people believe in the other way around. There are misconceptions. There are misconceptions also that talented people are mostly available in top class institutes in India like IITs, IIM. There are talents which are not greatly correlated or equated with IQ. Talent um, is something which is found in some form of aptitude, may not correlate always with or corroborate always with the general IQ or the capability of a candidate. And also we believe that only few people are talented, therefore stringent battery of tests are needed to identify them. Some people believe that well, if our test is too hard, too stringent, then the people who are coming out of those tests will be able to probably perform, uh, those who perform better in such kind of stringent tests are more talented people, people with better IQ. That is also not true. There are certain misconceptions. Likewise, we have got misconceptions in the personality assessment as well. When we, we find that uh, um, some of the people as I said, that people with high IQ may not be able to adjust well also. Likewise, person with negative attitude have got, uh, uh, have lack of integrity. Integrity is a component of persona, somebody's persona. Attitude also a component of somebody's persona. Some people believe that if somebody has got a negative attitude, also have got lack of integrity. Compromising on all conflicting skills or conflicting issues is also called interpersonal skill. Some people believe that if there is a conflict, conflict of interest, conflict of some kind of ideas, where uh, there are two opposing motives of equal strength, if I continue to compromise with them, then probably person will have higher form of interpersonal skill, which is also not true. So, compromising on all conflicting issues cannot be termed as interpersonal skill. This can also be measured through psychometric assessment. Likewise, the, the, the attitude of a person, whether positive or negative, can also be assessed through a psychometric test. Likewise, integrity, commitment, motivational potential, all such attributes which are primarily non-cognitive personality based attributes can be assessed. People with experience take better decision is also a misconception. Actually, people of experience know that taking decision is more important than taking right decision or taking good decisions. So, with people uh, having experience, they do not bank exclusively on right or good decisions. They know that taking decision is more important than taking good or right decisions. Like uh, there is a misconception that taking decisions about self is very easy. Now, when we assess ourselves with uh, or we assess somebody through psychometric testing, which are generally some form of projective testing, we understand that assessment of self is very difficult. In fact, assessment of others is pretty easy, but assessment of self is very difficult. But when you try to understand others after assessment of oneself is absolutely more difficult. Therefore, when a psychologist try to understand others with the use of a psychometric test, it is generally a very easy affair. But the psychologist also have to assess themselves using certain tests and those assessment make them understand that how to understand others. 
Therefore, when we do psychometric assessment, it is important that we profile ourselves as well. We understand where we have got errors, where we make errors, where we have got biases. In fact, errors or biases are two different things. We make mistakes, those are called errors. We also make mistakes which are irreversible, they are called biases. When we call it bias, it is a reversible error. When we call error, it is reversible biases. So, errors and biases in our judgment is also possible in psychometric assessment. This is possible only when we understand ourselves first, whether we are making some kind of error or whether we are making some kind of biases. If it is a bias in psychometric testing, then we will never develop an insight and this is possible in personality testing. This is not generally possible in cognitive testing, where there is a very objective way of understanding somebody's IQ, somebody's ability to conceive, somebody's ability to solve a problem, somebody's ability to take decisions, somebody's attentional level, somebody's memory level. All these things under cognitive assessment system is very easily possible without having subjective biases. But in personality testing, it is possible that we have got subjective biases and based on those subjective biases, it is very important that we understand ourselves, our own profile first. We analyze it and then we try to understand others based on some form of projective testing or personality testing. We also believe that decision making is largely an intellectual activity, it is actually not always. It may be an intellectual activity, but at, at the same time decision may also possible, decision making is also possible through certain motivational components which are either conscious or at a unconscious level. Therefore, with this backdrop we need to understand what are the common concerns for people at large in the society. How different people at different disciplines can make use of psychometric testing or psychometric assessment procedures. Now, these tests and procedures are developed by psychometricians, by psychologists, by behavioral scientists. These are uh, uh, important tools, but these tools how they are to be used is possible to understand when only when we understand what are the common concerns. For example, how to determine capability of others, what are the procedure, do we try to understand the capability of others only by our experience. Like our mother are very, mothers are very good psychologists, actually they can tell about their children everything even if they do, do not read psychology. But the question comes, will the mother be able to tell other about other children, they may not be able to. So, the question comes whether understanding others capability is based exclusively on experience or based exclusively on knowledge. In fact, it is based on both. We need to use knowledge as well as experience both. So, how to determine capability of others is a very important concern. Do there a relation between attitude and aptitude in any organization is a very important consideration because if there are aptitude, there may not be possible at it, there may not be a good attitude. It is also possible that there are good attitude, but the aptitude level is very low. So, it is important in any organization to understand both aptitude and attitude. Normally, in any organization, the people are getting an entry through their aptitude or intellectual level, but if they have a bad attitude, they would not be able to sustain in that organization. Question comes, why persons develop negative attitude? that also needs to be understood. Who can adjust better in a team? Can we assess them? There are controversies of identity and integrity in any organization. Some people want their identity, their individual identity. Some people want their integrity. How to prioritize them? Who has got better integrity in comparison to identity grabbing? Who has got more need for identity as compared to integrity? These needs to be assessed in any organization. Whenever there is a team, the team may be in a production agency, the team may be in a manufacturing company, the team may be in a consultancy firm, the team may be in educational institutes, anywhere. So, the question whether the person has a priority for identity over integrity or integrity over identity should also be assessed using psychometric testing. It is possible to assess these components through psychometric assessment. 
How can integrity be tested in workplace? This is a very important consideration because testing integrity is a very difficult job. There are social desirability factors which are uh, very important to understand that social desirabilities are some form of socially accepted lies which are embedded into our grooming system. How can we test them? Whether the person deliberately tells lie or it is part of their social desirability. Finally, is there a method to assess leadership quality in an organization? These are important considerations. So, these concerns I am trying to project from two major angles. One angle is obviously the organizational requirements outside the domain of the educational purview, where people are not really uh, aware of the relevance of psychometric assessment in all spheres of life, which I would I am trying to project it in a uh, common man's view. The other is the use of psychometric assessment in understanding some form of ability within the academic environment. Within the academic environment, we use a variety of tests, but those tests also vary in a great deal from typical psychometric testing. In some of the following slides, we will try to understand the difference between two. But before we do that, we also need to understand that in a human behavior, how the attributes of achievements are generally measured. What are the different attributes of achievement, which are common concerns for each one of us to understand a human being. The attribute of aptitude and attitude, they always are very complementary to each other. They are opposing type of constructs. How do we assess them in some form of togetherness? Whether person is a sequential person or logical person or an intuitive person or a parallel processor person. So, the logicality and intuitiveness are the two opposite and complementary characteristics of a human being. Is it possible to assess both in the same human being to understand their complementarity of their functionalities within the system? That is another challenge. Versatility versus specificity is nothing but whether somebody's capability in all spheres of life or whether I am trying to measure somebody's capability in a particular atmosphere or a particular specific area of their capability whether we are trying to measure some form of creativity in a student or we are trying to measure some kind of general proficiency. So, creativity and proficiency may be altogether different forms of attributes or constructs we are interested in measuring. Whether somebody is action orientedness is more driven by purpose or more driven by passion, what is more important? The person is person driven, purpose driven person or a passion driven person. So, the action orientedness to do a particular job can also be understood by some form of testing procedure. They are complementary and conflicting characteristics or constructs of an human being or an individual, but they can also be measured separately with some form of togetherness in order to understand how they coexist being the opposing motives or opposing characteristics within the same individual. Likewise, integrity and identity. What is more important for a given job? Do I require identity or do I require integrity or do I need to prioritize integrity and identity for accomplishing a job? Either identity first, integrity later or integrity first, identity later. All these human characteristics, which are not a psychologically defined nomenclatures in order to understand the function a human being is supposed to execute in a given organization, these conflicting attributes have been kept here. So, when generally we try to understand or assess the potential of a human being, we try to assess in two different formats. One format is cognitive, purely cognitive as I said, when a cognitive assessment is made, we try to understand some of the capabilities for which uh, we will say they are they may be general ability, they may be job specific aptitude, they may be decision making capabilities and they may be cognitive skills, which we call all as cognitive skill. So, one of the important purpose of psychometric testing is to assess some of the cognitive skills and this cognition is nothing but how a person register information, how a person process information 
and how a person retrieve the information. So, these tests are available for all kinds of general abilities in the world. There are general these general abilities are based on certain theoretical constructs, but there are certain job specific aptitudes also they may there may be job specific constructs. A job may not require all kinds of general abilities there are certain job specific aptitudes are also available. So, cognitive tests are also possible for job specific aptitude decision making capability, capability as well as some form of cognitive skill. There are certain non cognitive tests which are also available for which the potentials can be assessed using psychometric testing. They are personality and integrity, emotional and social skills, leadership and teamwork, positive attitude and commitment. Generally um, in industries and educational institutes the cognitive traits are primarily given the importance, but in our country non cognitive attributes are not generally given much of importance, but it is in today's environment where the society is changing very fast with uh, radicalization of the ideas which are drawn from different other sources cross culturally. It is important that how they are impacting in our overall performance level, how they are changing our personality, how they are changing our already embedded social skills to a new form of skills, how we are actually adjusting uh, in the conflicts of value social aspiration and the realities. People often suffer from the conflicts of value orientation, social expectation or aspiration orientation and reality orientation. Value orientation is something what is written in the book, which our uh, former generations used to always advocate for. The current generation may be looking for more towards the reality orientation and the people in between the two generation may be looking for something to do, which is in between reality and value orientation that I call social aspiration based orientation. Now, how these conflicts are attracting us, how these conflicting are creating turbulence into us should be measured in any organization to understand the performance level. Therefore, understanding emotional and social skills, understanding personality and integrity component, understanding leadership and teamwork, understanding positive attitude and commitment are absolutely important. There was a time may be generations back when we used to believe that presence of positive trait automatically ensures absence of negative trait. This may not be true today, there is a coexistence possible of having positive traits as well as negative traits in the same set of individuals. Therefore, it is very important that we understand all those potentials in a given individual at one go. Now, I would like to give you an example of how different forms of achievement tests or aptitude tests are used for understanding somebody's capability. Now, there are four types of tests are generally utilized. They are called aptitude test, achievement test, proficiency test and test of creativity. There are different attributes within the cognitive set of uh, uh, test procedures. Aptitude test is something that measures the ability to perform uh, in the future. I mean we do not measure what the person is capable of right now we only try to understand how good he is a raw material and under certain training conditions how well he would be performing for tomorrow. But when we try to measure somebody's achievement, we try to understand the measures the ability to perform in the present. It is possible that he may not have good potential for tomorrow or he may not have done something in the um, past, but he has been doing currently very well. So, if I am interested to understand his current level of performance, we generally use a psychometric test which is achievement oriented test. There is a proficiency based test, which actually measures the ability to perform in the past, what the person has achieved in the past. So, when I take a student in a given educational institution, I may test his proficiency level that is whatever he has studied earlier, whether he has got good marks or not, apart from giving him a test for which he has been given training for last several years. So, proficiency test is based on the past capability, the achievement test is based on the present capability and the aptitude test is based on the future capability. And along with it there are test of creativity, where it measures the ability to solve a problem inductively. Creativity is something different 
slightly different from the pure cognitive ability which we term as intelligence. Intelligence is something where the person's capability is understood, but the capability is generally understood in a deductive manner. That is, whenever there is a solution of a problem inherent within the problem, intelligent people often try to get it or capable are capable of getting it very quickly. But if the solution of a problem is not inherent within the problem, which is to be accessed inductively, people with high degree of creativity, they can actually do it. Therefore, creativity is a domain of thinking, thinking and not really a domain of intelligence, where the person's capability to think differently actually make him creative, rather than his processing ability or intelligence level to solve a particular problem. So, within the domain of cognitive test, there are various forms of test available, which we can make use of. And people based on the job, based on the performance, based on the level, we can actually test what kind of test we should be availing for tomorrow. If we are interested in having a test for tomorrow, where the training would be given afterwards, we can test, we can take up a aptitude test. Or if we think that the current level is very important to induct a person, we can use the achievement test. Or if we think that the person's past experience is good enough to achieve a particular outcome, then a proficiency test would be good. But we can always test creativity from altogether a different angle, as I have said just now. So, how to develop a system now? Whatever be the test, it may be a personality test, it may be an intelligence test. Whenever we try to test a system, we do not test a system in isolation. We do not try to understand a particular attribute in isolation. It is although done worldwide that uh, some people try to understand the motivational level, some people try to understand the personality, some people try to understand the interest level, some people try to understand the IQ level, some people try to understand the decision making capability. Most important thing is that whenever we try to understand these attributes in separation, in some kind of isolation, then it does not allow us to predict the person's outcome in totality. Therefore, it is important to develop a system. Whenever we refer about a system, it actually comprises of a battery of a test or system of systems, where we develop a complete profile of a human being based on the job, based on the need and based on the profile. So, whenever we develop a system, a psychometric system, we do three kinds of thing. One we call as need analysis, one we call as job analysis and one we call as profile analysis. Now, in order to develop a system, which is basically a battery of tests, we must understand that what is the need, what are the current requirement for which a system is to be developed because developing a system is a very difficult ask. Question is whether we have got a short term mission for that or we have a planned vision. The need is to be understood. Once the need is understood, then we have to see that what job we have in hand, what are the jobs involved in it, what are the tasks involved in it. And based on the task, we need to understand what are the abilities required to undertake that task. So, task analysis and ability analysis are the two other components which we call collectively as job analysis. Some people do this job analysis based on theory as well. They do not require a job, they do not have a job in hand. So, they may be having a theoretical uh, basis behind making an assessment, but that there also we need to do, we need to understand what are the constructs that we are interested in understanding, which can be replaced as task analysis and what are the ability under that construct that we are interested in measuring. Finally, we need to create a profile. The profile making in a system development is absolutely important in psychometric assessment. In today's environment, we do not test a particular ability in isolation as I said. We create a complete profile and each individual has a unique profile. Now, that profile is very important for making a overall prediction of somebody's capability for tomorrow. Now, this profile once it is created, the cardinal traits are understood separately the secondary traits are understood separately. Cardinal traits are those traits like temperament, which do not change under certain context. They do not, the content of the personality do not change with the change of the context. And there are certain traits, 
which are called secondary traits. The content of the personality may change ultimately with some kind of change in the state or some kind of context. So, context and content in understanding a profile is very important. In order to understand the intent of a person, the context, the content and the intent all three are very important. By profile analysis, we try to understand what are those traits which do not change under varieties or variations in the context. And the secondary traits are those traits which are traits available, but they may subject to change with some kind of change in the context. With this we understand or develop a system. Now, there are various forms of job analysis are available, which are already uh, they are in the different literature. One is called threshold trait analysis system, where we try to understand different kinds of personality characteristics. There are functional job analysis kind of system, where there are various forms of cognitive profiling is done. Now, some people do exclusive personality profiling, some people do exclusive cognitive profiling based on the job. Some people do exclusive task attribute performance analysis, which is nothing but an analysis of their attitudinal traits. And finally, some people do some kind of profiling based on some critical incident technique, which is nothing but benchmarking to create a threshold beyond which the subject would be taken and below which they would not be taken. So, in order to determine a benchmark, critical incident technique is used to do the job analysis. When we call a develop a system based on theories. So, theoretical constructs are already defined in the literature. So, we do not have much of difficulty when we develop a system or psychometric assessment system or system of systems based on theories. Theories are already available, based on theories dimensions are already defined, based on the dimensions the items can very easily be uh, con constructed and naturally the test can be developed based on all these capabilities. But when we do a job analysis, the job analysis is unique for every organization, where we try to first understand in order to perform in that test, in that particular uh, job, whether personality is more important or cognitive profile is more important or attitude, the orientation towards the job or may be very important or what are the benchmarking based on which, below which or above which we would be able to do a cutoff, develop a cutoff score for taking a particular individual. So, when we try to understand the assessment system, I should also be able to refer that after developing a system, we should try to understand whether we should go for a new system or we should bank on a time tested system. There are various systems available in the world, they are time tested systems, they are personality system assessment, there are assessment system for cognitive level. Whether we should use those test systems at a generic level for all populations across the world considering identical or equal, that is one question. The other question is whether we should develop a test based on a population or not. Each population is separate, each population is different. So, population representativeness is a different issue as compared to time tested system. Some people opt for a time tested system irrespective of the population. Some people try to develop population representative system and not banking exclusively on time tested system. Some people develop a psychometric assessment system based on core qualities that is what are the cardinal features and some people they develop a test based on a complete profile which include cardinal traits, primary traits and secondary traits. That is also a difference in observation and these are critical distinctions which are to be made when a system is developed for personality assessment. Some people develop a system which are assessment intensive, some people develop system which are technology friendly. That is I develop a system which is fully computerized, which does not require the, the assessment of the by the assessors who are trained in the system. So, we can make it as a technology friendly assessment system or we can make it as a system which is purely assessment intensive. For example, projective test in psychology is or psychometric assessment is a assessment intensive test. They cannot be fully computerized or made technology friendly in order to make predictions. Likewise, there are systems which exclusively measure the presence of positive traits. 
and there are systems which exclusively measure the absence of negative traits. That, that is some, something we have to decide whether we are interested in developing a profile of positive traits or we are interested in ensuring the absence of negative traits. So, systems also develop based on the presence of positive traits and absence of negative traits. Likewise, systems are also developed based on deficiency as well as based on efficiency. Some systems are actually developed to pinpoint some form of deficiency and some systems are developed to pinpoint some form of efficiency. And finally, whether we are interested in developing a achievement based system which are normally done or whether interested we are interested in a person job fit based system that is also a distinction we have to make. So, these critical issues come in psychometric assessment from time to time and uh, one has to understand realize that these conflicting issues will come finally, when we uh, try to develop a system and until now unless we are aware of the dichotomies which affect the assessment system provide uh, uh, until unless we understand it probably we are not in a position to effectively make use of it for future. Finally, there are certain substantive testing assessment method which I would like to give a sort of inventory. There are different forms of ability tests like as aptitude test, attainment test, proficiency test, creativity test. There are certain tests which are primarily on the which we call as test of dispositions or predispositions which are personality test, motivational test, emotional reaction test. There are some tests which are not exclusively based on psychometric properties, but they are job knowledge test that kind of tests are also available. There are performance tests also available, work samples are possible. There are integrity tests which includes honesty, value commitment. There are interest and preference inventories, there are interview techniques which are also a form of assessment and there are group activities or team assessments. All kinds of assessment tests are available, all kinds of assessment tests are possible, but they need to be devised, they need to be customized. A test can be translated, a test can be adapted, a test can be standardized, a test can also be customized. Customization is a process which seems to me as a very important thing for which uh, we should be able to adapt some form of test to the requirement of the current population. So, the rationale for using all such kind of tests is that there are increased regulation and legislations coming up for making use of the human skill. There are uh, this, this, uh, this uh, assessment is something which uh, we must understand that uh, the, the the assessment in, in terms of some form of uh, understanding of the predictive validity is absolutely important. In fact, what the person would be able to do 10 years down the line is a very important consideration. So, if a psychometric assessment device can tell the predictive validity of somebody's uh, assessment score, it would be of absolutely very high usage. Reduction of training wastages by doing so, by predicting whether the person would be able to do very well or will be able to get himself trained very well, will also reduce the training um, wastages. Likewise, the usage as part of global HR, all kinds of HR professionals have started using psychometric assessment either in educational institutions or for organizations which include some form of industries, some form of corporate world. The invariance to academic qualification is also came to uh, light also that psychometric assessment does not depend exclusively on academic qualification. Academic qualification is some form of benchmark, but psychometric assessment actually goes beyond that. So, the invariance to psychometric qualification is today understood uh, when uh, as far as psychometric uh, assessment is concerned. The ease of screening with large number of candidates is also possible through some form of technological innovations in all kinds of psychometric assessment. And finally, the increased demand of specialized skills, this uh, uh, to tomorrow's environment will actually require lot of specialized skills. In, in order to uh, keep pace with the technological development and uh, the human development or human skill development, it is very important that we understand 
what kind of personal or human skill is available in a given person. If the distance between the technological skill development and human skill development is too much, then either technology will become obsolete or human skill would not be utilized effectively. Therefore, it is very important that we reduce the gap between human skill and the technological development, which is possible by only selecting the right kind of person for the right kind of job. In any case, it is uh, important that to reduce training wastages, to get the right kind of job, person for the right kind of job, to have predictive validity, to, to understand the invariance of psychometric assessment and academic qualification. It is very important that psychometric assessment to be used very effectively. Finally, I would like to tell that though we use it uh, very often the psychometric testing, those who are using it or developing some kind of competence about it, we must understand that there is always a prediction arch that after making an assessment, I would like to predict that somebody is going to do uh, or somebody is going to become like this. We should try to avoid it. There is a simplification arch also that it is technologically very simple. One can make use of it easily with some form of training that should also be uh, avoided. Illusory expertise is also another thing. It takes decades for a person to ultimately develop mastery and psychometric assessment. So, after having some kind of training, one should not try to make use of it. Sloppy execution is another thing that should be avoided primarily because if the test is not administered properly, there is a possibility that there is a uh, the prediction is completely wrong. We should not try to oversell it as well as we should try to avoid all kinds of errors and biases which are involved in the interpretation of psychometric testing. Finally, it is important to understand that test technology is no less simpler than any other form of te technologies including space technology. It is a different technology, one has to develop mastery, it has got great potentials and I am sure with the understanding of how it can be useful to various conditions, we would be able to make best use of it for tomorrow's future. Thank you.